With the introduction of Chaos Dust, it's important to run stage 25 if you're at the point where you can start doing so. This is my team for stage 25 of Phantom Shogun that I got from Boozer, and he got this from Bronco Raids. Uh, again, if you're not following Bronco, I would suggest that you do because he's always coming out with great compositions. I will link and tag them down below. I'll link this video down below as well, just so you guys can see it. Okay, so here we go into the fight. We're going to start off with having Gnarlhorn targeted, but he's got the unkillable, so it doesn't matter. And then we have Emic coming up with a taunt. We have Painkeepers resetting the skill cooldowns so that we can keep this continuous loop going on. Then we have Ninja coming in with his HP burns, and then we have a Cold Heart to do the enemy max HP moves. And this process just repeats itself over and over again. And this hasn't failed. I've run this quite a few times, several times so far. In fact, I did this team, a, a variation of this team, I think last year. But I had gotten a comp from Biohack. Not Bi yeah, Biohack. Biohack RSL is another content creator. And originally I looked at his video and then I put a team together. I don't remember if it was the same team as this one. But I know that this team... I got from Boozer, who got it from Bronco. But this is the team here, and we're going to go ahead and dive right in. So let's go ahead and start off with the presets. Thank you for 761 subs. Gnarl Horn is just going to close off his A2, open up with his A3, put up his unkillable. Then Painkeeper is going to... This is the same Painkeeper, by the way, that I use in my clan boss team. So this right here, going 250 speed... 51k HP. Where's my clan boss team? Same same peop, uh, pain keeper right here. 250 speed, 51k HP. So that's pretty nice. I thought I was going to have to remove my... Uh, like, keep switching gears around. But no, this pain keeper is doing the same thing for both. Uh, we're closing off the A2. Opening up with the A3. Or just, uh, you know, prioritizing the A3. Make sure that... Painkeeper is booked. Painkeeper needs to be booked. If you're using this Painkeeper in Clan Boss, then you're going to have her booked fully up anyway, but you're going to want to have everybody booked, by the way. I have to point that out because I remember when I was doing bio uh, Biohacks video um, for Stage 25 of Phantom Shogun, I was like beating my head over. I was like, what's going on? What's wrong? And it turned out I wasn't having, I didn't have Painkeepers booked or Gnarl Horn booked all the way. Uh, Cold Heart, just closing out the A2. You don't have to close out the A2 if you don't want to, but she's just there for her Pain Seeker. Or, yeah, her Heart Seeker ability. Ninja, prioritize one on the A2 and then two on the A3. Emic is going to do a uh, prioritizing number one for A3 and then A2 for A2. So he puts up his Taunt and Unkillable ability and then he puts up his Shield and the shield is going to decrease the cooldowns of everybody else. And then Painkeeper helps to reduce the cooldowns of everybody else. And that's what keeps this going. So there's two things you have to note about Gnarlhorn. He needs to be tanky enough to survive the first hit. And he also needs to have the highest crit damage on your team. He needs to have the highest crit damage. So 72k HP, 3.8 for the defense and then 260 crit damage. So he needs to have survivability stats. You could also put him in a reaction set, a re or reaction gear. Reaction gear will have a 25% chance. I think it goes, it's gonna go all the way up to 75% if you have three pieces. But this will change the critical hit to a normal hit to help him survive. You could do that, or you could just try to build him as tanky as possible. Here are the pieces of gear. Sorry, I almost neglected that. Focusing on HP and defense. And having the highest amount of crit damage. The reason you want high crit damage on Gnarlhorn is because you want him to be the target. And the Phantom Shogun is going to prioritize the person with the highest crit damage. So again, high HP, high defense, high crit damage. 173 speed is the speed that you need, so keep that in mind, nothing else matters. You could take Faultless Defense for some extra HP, and to reflect a portion of the damage reflected, but I don't know that it is necessary. I think I saw 
uh, Boozer put this on. I forgot who I saw put this on, but somebody put it on and I was like, I'm copying that. Here are the masteries. There are no masteries, but you could have masteries. Let's go ahead and take a look at Painkeeper, who was the next one I remember. Like I said, the same build that I used for Clan Boss, fully booked. We have Phantom Touch. These are the masteries that I have on her. Now, the only thing that I think matters when it comes to Painkeeper is the speed. The speed, I don't know what the wiggle room is. But anyway, 250 speed is where Painkeeper needs to be at. I don't know that the other stats matter. I don't think they do. But 250 speed is, is just basically what you're looking for. Alright, big boy Emic himself. Basically should just call himself 271 Bronco. Because for a lot of Bronco's compositions, it's at 271 speed for Emic. And I think that's pretty funny. When we're talking about Emic, I think the most important thing is that he is tanky enough. So a lot of HP, a decent amount of defense, and of course 271 speed. I have seen people use him in a regen set, but I think that the, the most important thing to, to remember is 271 speed. I don't know if there's wiggle room for that. I, I wouldn't deviate from it, but if you do, let me know. And then high HP and defense, pieces of gear on Emic. Real quick. Skills needs to be fully booked. And if you got blessings on him, I'm not exactly sure what blessing I would put on him, but maybe Brimstone. When in doubt, I Brimstone out. Here are the Masteries. There are no Masteries, but you could if you wanted to. 271 speed, high HP. Let's look at Cold Heart. Is it this one? 224? Yeah, there it is. Alright, so in Boozer's video, and I think someone else's video, I saw that Cold Heart was running at 223 speed, but for this Cold Heart, we're running at 224. The, the set doesn't really matter. You do want to have everything booked. If you have a blessing, go ahead and put Phantom Touch. Here are the masteries. We're taking Helm Smasher. And that's basically it. I'm pretty sure you could change the masteries. Again, don't blindly copy masteries, but you can go ahead and blindly copy masteries. I'm choosing to use this Cold Heart because this Cold Heart has the highest amount of blessings on my account. And as you know, the more blessings you have, the better. So you can reduce the, the counter on Phantom Shogun. So we have 5k, a little over 5k attack, 224 speed, 100% crit rate, and 250 crit damage. Just about where we want her. But the 224 speed is what we want here. And of course the damage stats, because we want to max out, to cap out on the damage with her A3. Heartseeker ability. So I, I'm thinking 223, 224 works. I think someone said 225 works as well, but I'm not exactly sure what the parameters are there. Attack, crit damage, speed. Okay, Ninja. Immortal, accuracy, I don't think it matters though. This is just what, what came out of it. Here are the pieces of gear if you want to look. So when it comes to Ninja, I think the most important thing is that he is with high accuracy. So here he is at 60k HP, 4.2 attack. 251 speed is what's working, so I would stick with that. And then 600 plus accuracy. I think 605 is the minimum needed. So when you're building Ninja, the most important thing is having accuracy. Again, guys, these are just stats to work towards. I understand that it's pretty hard to attain these stats but it's just something to work towards this is an end game uh boss it's this is end game content so you know for somebody who either pay pays to win or has been playing for years this might be viable for for most of the people within that um i guess uh umbrella but for many people this is probably not going to be the easiest thing uh, again this is not an easy build it's very gear intensive. Yeah, so just the most important thing about Ninja or whoever you're going to use, if you're placing debuffs, then you're going to want high accuracy. I don't think that using a Krizia or Nut will help because the Phantom Shogun has a passive that reduces the amount of damage from multi-hitters by a certain extent with each consecutive hit. Unless you're one of these guys with a bunch of Nuts and a bunch of Akrizias. Ninja is fully booked. If you can get Brimstone on him, get Brimstone on him. Here are the masteries, just so you guys can check, take a look at that. And if you guys want to see my new Iron Twins 15 team, check this video out right here.